My name is um, Susan O'Neill. I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at St Vincent's Hospital Melbourne. Uh, my role uh, is to make sure that we are deploying the strategy for St Vincent's Health Australia through our organisation and also making sure that we're managing clinical and corporate risk and that I see my role importantly as creating an environment for staff to be the best they can, to do their best work so we deliver the best patient care. Yeah. St Vincent's Health Australia has a, an Envision 2025 strategy that really looks out on, on three major things, seeing, serving and striving something greater. And there's also a really strong focus on making uh, patients and staff feel valued, welcome and safe. And under that framework, we're then uh, ensuring that St Vincent's Hospital Melbourne is contributing strongly to uh, the Victorian health agenda uh, and ensuring that we are a, a key and significant player in tertiary healthcare in the state. So from our point of view, uh, we have a strategic services plan that is actually focused on uh, looking at opportunities for growth, um, looking at uh, biomedical research uh, and being a leader in that space. Um, actually looking at how we uh, reform and deliver integrated care that is really responsive to patient needs. And also a very important part of our work is that we provide the preferential treatment to the uh, poor and vulnerable. So within that framework we um, are delivering uh, many occasions of service for patients um, who actually uh, come into our care every day and people that we care for in the community as well. So one of the key uh, objectives that we have is a focus on excellence and transformation. And uh, my experience is that the continuous improvement model, which actually originated in um, sort of manufacturing and automotive industry, has slowly after the, over the last 15 years really evolved uh, now into other service industries, places like banking, etc., and now um, more importantly into healthcare. And, and it's been uh, enabled uh, in different ways in healthcare, but um, I suppose we're seeing it as a really important foundation for how we move forward in the way that we operate a hospital and actually how we uh, provide the best care to patients. So the improvement science um, has actually been developing um, over time and it's really now starting to become quite well embedded and it has a, has a sort of connection between three things. Uh, it's continuous quality improvement, uh, quality engineering and quality assurance. And I think in the past in healthcare we focused much on assurance and compliance, but the uh, addition of thinking forward of actually looking at how we keep continually improving, using ourselves as our own control, is a really important part of this, um, of this strategy. What we're really seeing too is that um, it's really not a matter of if, but uh, when healthcare organisations will start this approach. The Institute of Healthcare Improvement from a, a national, an international perspective has been advocating this model for a long time um, and certainly it's the foundation of, of most business excellence frameworks that you'll see in the world across big global companies, um, whether that's actually with a, a, from a, 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 sh a shareholder perspective or from a stakeholder perspective. So uh, we're seeing that uh, we are trying to be an early adopter um, in Australia and that we're actually trying to uh, pave a different way to help us sustain into the future. From an overall perspective, we've seen some significant um, changes in our, um, our key performance indicators. We've seen a 30% reduction in, in, in our lost time injuries and staff actually um, being injured. We've seen a 24% reduction in our falls. We've seen a 50% reduction in our serious pressure injuries. We've actually uh, met our elective surgery targets. We've nearly um, had a 30% increase in our um, access into our emergency department. Uh, we've, seen a, uh, we've seen us uh, meet our budget and we've also um, improved our patient satisfaction, which is really important to us and our willingness for them to recommend a hospital from 60% to 70%. We're really proud of that. So my vision is that we have an organisation with the 6,010 staff that we have here are all improving the way that we work. And that not only do they do their job every day, but they actually improve their job every day. They feel empowered to do that, they own the outcomes, and they're really proud of working here at St Vincent's. The impact on the culture and leadership at St Vincent's has been, I think, um, really powerful and difficult um, when you actually need to put in a new system, you actually need to make sure that all levels of the organisation are engaged in that change. Um, the executive here at St Vincent's have a very strong commitment to safe and improved patient care. Um, I feel supported by that. They're supported in the organisation to deliver that. And we are now working with our managers and our direct care staff um, to do that. 
we have leaders across the whole organisation um, and everybody leads their work every day. So we're trying to take that philosophy and make sure it's not about a hierarchy and organisational chart, but everybody um, being the leader of the best healthcare. I think the advice I'd give to other people if you're starting this journey is to understand what you're committing to. Uh, there's a lot of discipline in this work. It means that some of the, um, the parameters that people have worked in previously, which is I'll do my best, I'll do what's necessary, isn't enough. You need to understand how you set a goal, how you understand where you currently are, and continuously and relentlessly work to fill that gap or change that gap so that you actually know that you've got a stable environment and that you know when things become abnormal. A really key issue we have in healthcare is that our, our variation is so strong and so great that we always don't know when we're abnormal. We actually tolerate a lot of things and this is actually resensitising ourselves to make sure that zero tolerance for staff safety issues, zero tolerance for serious harm for patients should be what we work on every day. It's not something that we um, uh, just take for granted. So that's really the key thing for me. I'd like to share this story because it's probably the, my why. You know, why do I do this? Um, quite a number of years ago, I was working in, a, in an environment where um, we were doing some improvement work, trying to um, improve the way medications were being delivered. And we actually um, had a medication trolley and uh, we took apart the trolley and there were a number of things on that trolley and there was a paper bag and in that paper bag was a set of false teeth. And um, we uh, sort of put the things out and tried to understand why were there other things besides medications on this trolley. And uh, two of the nursing staff looked at each other and they looked at the, the bag and, and, uh, and the, the, the dentures and said, oh no, I think they're one of their patient's teeth. And I said, oh, that's good luck, we found them, we can actually give them to them. And they said, oh, but the problem is the lady died. And this was a renal dialysis unit and the lady had been a, a long-term patient and had actually eventually died from her disease. And the, uh, I said, oh, that's a shame. I said, yeah, but Sue, so the major issue was is that the only thing she wanted before she died was her teeth and we couldn't find them. I think that was one of the most powerful moments about why do we actually want to do this, is that if our systems are disorganised to the point where um, great people are working around these really tough systems, we can't do some basic care needs for patients, then we need to make sure we fix that up. So that's been my goal and my driver for a really, really long time. So what's next is ensuring that um, we have everyone in the organisation, um, I suppose, with the same, same vision, uh, that they want to be part of a system that is actually improving patient care every day, that it's not something that you do through a committee uh, that's not something you do individually, but we do that um, in an integrated and focused way. And uh, we know why we're doing it and where we're doing it. And we celebrate the great achievements that we make.